Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are back in Azure Lane, New Jersey and I'm going to show you guys the first match I ever played in it. Uh, this is literally like game number one right out the gate. I put on the Azure Lane Commander, I did the build thing that I wanted to try and then I threw this thing at the enemy and seen what happened. And uh, this is going to be one of those games where literally the worst possible thing that could have happened happened. You never see this happen on this map, right? Like, this is generally one of those maps where people tend to play a little bit passively, unless you get the goobers that like to go up the middle, which happens occasionally, but most people fail at because they don't know what they're doing. But, uh, for the most part, this tends to be a pretty passive map. It's a small map. People don't need to move a long distance to be able to engage the enemy. So it seemed like it was going to be the perfect game for the New Jersey's new test. Like, it, it literally... I, I was like, man, this is going to be amazing. And we end up having us a fantastic game. But not because of anything that has anything to do with New Jersey. <laughs> It's mainly because the enemy just threw themselves at us hardcore. And uh, the unfortunate side of things is my team does nothing on this side of the map. That's not to say my entire team does nothing, because my entire team actually ends up being pretty solid. It's just my side of the map that fails miserably. Um, but that doesn't matter, because we're going to do everything we can to, to give our team the best possible chance at winning on this side of the map. Um, but yeah, have you sacrificed, I'm not gonna lie, that might be my newest thing, sacrificing our firstborn baby carrots, it, it's gonna be a thing. Make it a thing. I will make a freaking emoji out of a baby carrot, if I have to. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I, I, I really have been having a lot of fun, uh, with these, these epic mods and stuff. I don't actually have an epic mod on this one, this is just the New Jersey with the Azure Lane New Jersey Commander. So keep that in mind. But, uh, yeah, I, I legitimately have been having more fun lately in World of Warships than I've had in a while. Uh, so, props to the developers. I will say this, props to the developers for actually bringing us, bringing some fun back to the game. It's been a while, we've been waiting, and, uh, it seems like we're starting to maybe make some headway? Cross my fingers, hope to death. Yeah, okay, never mind. Don't want to say that, because... We haven't sacrificed our firstborn carrot yet, so Lord knows if I say hope to die, it probably will happen. <laughs> but we're going to take a shot at the Amalfi. Amalfi's paying attention. He's not an idiot. He's going to stay behind the island, keep himself protected. Unfortunate. But uh, watch what the enemy is going to do. Watch what my team does. I have a destroyer here at Delta. He's uh, broadside to the enemy, which is a terrible way to sit, by the way. Uh, if you are in a destroyer and you're sitting in a smoke screen, which he's not currently in a smoke screen, but if you're sitting in a smoke screen, you don't want to be broadside in the smoke screen. And the reason being, smoke screens are torpedo magnets. I know, it's a surprising thing, but smoke screens are torpedo magnets, and if you're sitting broadside, you're an easier target to torp. Now here we've got Musashi over here, so we're bottom tier. That should be the first thing you guys notice. We're bottom tier. Amalfi's about to make a huge mistake, but look at the distance. Look at the distance. This guy is within 10 kilometers, unfortunately. So while we are going to make him pay, he is actually going to survive this, unfortunately. We do get one Citadel. We blap the crap out of him. He's got, like, no health left. But look at what I'm having to do here. Look at the entire enemy team. The entire enemy team is pushing up on this flank, right? So it's going to come down to us doing everything in our power to survive long enough to hold the enemy back for as long as possible. But watch my team. My team, my destroyer, to his credit, captured the base early, but fails to recognize the threat that is the enemy team pushing straight ahead. Our hipper is the first to succumb, as most cruisers are on a smaller map, where you've got an, a Zerg rush from, from literally the entire enemy team. Look at the amount of ships that are on this side. We've got four, uh, five, six, six ships on this side. We have an unknown destroyer, which ends up being a Friesland. We have the Amalfi. We have a, uh, a second cruiser in the back. Oh, hello, Friesland. Don't mind if I do. Gonna take this shot for sure. But uh, we are gonna blap the crap out of this Friesland. Six overpins, and we leave them alive. Of course we do. But there is a battleship that has managed to yellow straight through the Bravo cap. Uh, he is being engaged by the battleship that's behind, plus the destroyer that's there. Uh, I can't really do anything about it, because 
I'm currently trying to deal with these guys over here. Now, Musashi is about to make the dumbest turn you can ever make. You cannot do this in a Yami or a Musashi. And he gets very, very fortunate that I do not just outright delete him here. That should have been a dev strike. That should have been a dev strike. We only got one Citadel there. Any other time, that would be Dev Strike City. The fact that I only got one Citadel is just absolutely unbelievable. But uh, it, it, it happens. That's RNG for you. Sometimes it goes, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, Friesland, unfortunately, gets himself into a position where he's going to be able to disappear right about the time that I get reloaded. I am going to take a shot at him and try to, to hit him blind. We do get a hit on him, but not enough to finish him off, unfortunately. But uh, look at the enemy. I am the only one left. There is one battleship that managed to kill the bee, the, the guy that come out of the middle. Um, and then it's just me over here versus a Musashi, a Bismarck, a Kansas, a, a Malfi, and a Friesland. It's not what you call preferable, if I'm honest. And in fact, the Amalfi may have died, but I think he's still alive. But uh, Musashi, not wanting to get himself in a similar situation as he did last time, he manages to uh, stay bow into us. Uh, so I look over and I've got a Kansas rushing me. So immediately have to turn all all shots to the Kansas. And I've said this before, I'll say it again. Trying to Citadel a Kansas, especially up close, is very, very difficult. Uh, it's got a very thick belt as well as the fact that it's got ridiculously um, like low in the water as most American battleships do. Uh, at close range, you struggle to Citadel American battleships, but... Unfortunately, we get our first shot into him. We do a little bit of damage. We're trying to stay angled as best we can. We get our heal back just in time, but uh, this game is over for us. We're going to get one more good shot here, and I'm going to try to wait and go for the, the backside, but uh, I may have just misplaced that shot in the rush to try to get a shot off and didn't quite get it where I wanted it. I should have been aiming for the rear side plating just past the uh, belt armor there, but... Again, when you're in a situation like this, you're just trying to get that last big hit off before you die, right? And so you don't always have enough time to place the shot. And honestly, I could... The thought process there was to try to shoot the Kansas and then ram the, the Bismarck. But Bismarck got out of the way. Again, Bismarck's a very agile battleship. So he gets out of the way. Our Turpitz is, is throwing torpedoes out there, I think. Or he may have thrown torpedoes out there. But... Uh, yeah, this is not long for this world. Turpitz goes down. Torps are in the water, and I do believe he connects with something. I don't remember exactly what, but I do believe he connects one of these torpedoes with one of these ships. May have been the Bismarck. Uh, but, yeah, he is... Wait for it. Come on. You can see I'm staring at him. I'm waiting for the opportunity. Is he going to hit a torpedo? It should be coming up any moment. And it looks like a swing and a miss, boys unfortunate so uh yeah unfortunately doesn't manage to hit a torpedo but look at the team did we hold off long enough our team has managed to win all three of the other caps remember this is a domination so while we're we're losing this fight initially we're actually winning this fight on points despite being a slight disadvantage because we have three out of the four caps so at this point all our team has to do is survive and we win Keep them out of the cap if you can, or at least deny them from getting a cap, and we win the match because we're gonna we're gonna grab the lead really really quickly, and then it's just gonna come down to making sure you survive. Now, Azuma has doubled back to protect our cap. Huge play. Our uh, battleships are going. One battleship is going through the mid to also protect that cap. And the battleship and cruiser that are at Charlie, I think they're going to wrap around behind these guys. Which basically ends up being a gigantic flanking maneuver for their entire team. And uh, it actually ends up working out pretty well. Uh, and this is what I'm saying. Like, despite having not a whole lot of help on my side of the map. I mean, pretty much everybody that took damage on my side took damage from me. Uh, with the exception of the Bismarck. So out of all of the things that my teammates did, they managed to damage a Bismarck over like half his health that's that's what the the battleship that was next to me and the the cruiser and the destroyer managed to do was take the health off of the bismarck 
because everybody else was basically untouched until I touched them. But we ended up with 132,000 damage here. Uh, and like I said, our Odin is going through the middle. He catches the beautiful broadside of a Bismarck and a Kansas. And this is what you dream about. Even though the Odin has pretty small guns, 305 millimeter guns are still fully capable of just punishing a broadside, especially at these ranges. So you've got a Baltimore here, which is a little bit uh, disconcerting. You're being just annihilated by secondaries or inundated by secondaries but if if the odin can manage to keep himself in a good position which i mean at this point there you're going to struggle with him he should have probably slowed down and stopped rather than continuing this zerg rush but uh here he's got a beautiful look at being able to remove a balti this balti is he needs to be like completely like this guy needs to go play the lottery this guy gets so freaking lucky right here. He is full broadside. He's turning away now, but it's a little too late. This guy should be able to punch right through the rear side plating. But uh, no, he gets away with it for now. Uh, we are going for the torpedo run, obviously. That's why he's focusing the Balti uh, and then just trying to get torpedoes off. He gets the torps away at the Bismarck, but unfortunately he's triple fired. He's going to be going down. Uh, and again... I, I understand the play, but I don't at the same time. Like, you didn't need to do that. You could have killed that Bismarck. You probably could have killed the Balti, uh, and you could have stayed alive. But I understand he, he probably felt like he needed to make a home run play, so he just went for it. And so sometimes that's going to happen. Like, we've all done it. We've all been in that situation where we're like, okay, we're, you know, we get excited. Like, the, the game depends on us, and we have to make a home run play. I mean, you guys have seen videos of it. You've seen me do it on stream where I try to make the home run play. It doesn't always work out. So uh, it's glorious when it does. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, if that guy had managed to put himself in a position to, to get rid of the Bismarck and get rid of the Balti and potentially stay alive to where he's able to shoot at the Kansas, like, that's a wrap. Like, that's a huge play. But it's pretty unlikely. Now, we are down to just an Azuma and a Battleship. The Battleship has moved all the way around to grabbing the uh, the Char or the Delta Cap, which is huge. Again, like... I, I don't have anything bad to say about my teammates that, that went all the way around the map. Like, they did their jobs. They did exactly what they needed to do. Seeing that they were under very little duress because they had very few ships that were holding that side of the map versus the entire team coming to my side. So, they did the right thing. They grabbed the caps, they rotated around, they go back to defend the cap to try to hold it. Obviously, they weren't able to, but they were able to inflict more damage. Azuma's keeping himself in a position where he can take advantage of the spotting of this main. Main is unlikely to die right away unless he does something incredibly stupid, like go broadside to a Kansas at point blank. Uh, but he can easily counter this Balti. Like, Balti should be dead here. I'm sorry. Like, this Balti, I, I get if this is me in a Balti and I'm broadside to a freaking main or any American battleship for that matter, this is a death strike, 100% of the time. And of course he gets one Citadel and leaves the guy just enough to get away. <laughs> Glad it's not just me. Glad it's not just me, folks. But uh, anyway, that Balti is going to continue to be a pest. He's actually going to put himself in a position to to get rid of this Kansas. And again, this is this is a huge play. If he can manage to get rid of the Balti and the Kansas, that's a win for the team. That is a hundred percent a win for the team. Uh, the Friesland has moved back to capturing the Charlie Cap. Unfortunately, we weren't able to capture the base, but we can at least move in and deny them points from the the base that they're currently in. So that'll help delay the inevitable or delay the the. Um, their their team coming back the game's starting to get into the final two minutes as well so there's not a lot of time for them to come back here uh, and we the big thing that we have to avoid is dying without killing one of these guys you have to trade at minimum and preferably trade the battleship but uh, you can see he's using the rear guns there he's not able to get rid of this multi multi again should just go play the lottery i don't know how this man gets away with being broadside from this range to a freaking main or any american battleship for that matter but I was really hoping that our, our main would get this uh, this shot down, but uh, or at least ram this guy as he's about to die, but uh, unfortunately not. He does get a shot out, leaving the Balti with just enough to get away. But Azuma manages to finish off the Kansas immediately, which is big because that allows us to maintain our points lead. There is just one minute to go. All Azuma has to do is survive and we win. He doesn't need to do anything crazy. 
He just has to survive, and we win. But he also knows that the Balti has, like, no health. If he lands one good hit, Balti dies. Balti did manage to get a heal off, apparently, which is surprising this late in the game that he even had a heal to, to give. But, I mean, in fairness, he wasn't really shot at any point during the match until that main came around the corner to blap him. So there's that. But uh, that heal actually saves his life for the moment. But again, all the Azuma has to do is survive. Azuma has fantastic 310mm guns and uh, has the armor to deal with any cruiser that, that decides to shoot at it. So it's not scared of that Balti in the slightest. As long as he doesn't give the Balti a broadside and allow that amazing AP from the Balti to annihilate him. And with 10 seconds left, the game was closer than it needed to be. I'll give it that. But at the end of the day... He did just enough he needed to do to win the match. And I hope you guys enjoyed. This was a little bit of a quickie for you guys. I say quickie. It's not really a quickie. It's a full match. But it was a solid match. 132,000 damage in a very short amount of time in the New Jersey as everybody threw themselves at me. But we get third on the team. The Azuma rightfully gets top of the leaderboard. The main coming in second. Well done to both of those guys. And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always... I will see you in the next video.